Hi, I'm Jonathan. We're in our Fleetwood, Pennsylvania factory for Oswald's Mill Audio OMA and Fleetwood Sound. And this is a really interesting thing. This is the um, business part of a Neumann cutting lathe, which probably to you looks like some kind of weird turntable. And it is, except this is, this is the machine that actually makes your records. This is the top part of the lathe. Um, a Neumann lathe is an incredibly high precision machine that was made by George Neumann in Berlin uh, for decades. This is the top part of it. It's a really big machine. Um, I think we've, we've done videos on these machines in the past. Maybe we can cut something in here. This part was lent to us by Chris Muth, who's the world's foremost technician, servicing these lathes. So the situation with vinyl, with analog records, is kind of like those cars in Havana, Cuba, you know, from the 50s that were so well built and, and the drivers just keep fixing them because no new cars were available in Cuba. And what happened with, with um, the machines, these cutting lathes, which are absolutely necessary to make a record, is that um, they stopped being made when, when analog stopped, which was in 1982. The last one of these lathes was made in 1982. Most of them, however, are earlier. This, I believe, was a VMS-70. Uh, 70 stands for the year in which it was made. Chris Muth lent us this top part of the lathe, um, which is the uh, sled, well, the bed for the sled that, that carries the cutting head over to the lacquer that gets uh, placed on this vacuum platter. Turn it on. So the record's on here. Uh, the lacquer, it's a one-sided lacquer master, it's, and it has uh, like a mirror surface. And the cutting head comes over and cuts the groove. And then that's taken to a plating place and they, they plate it and send it to the record pressing plant. And that, that's what makes the records. So if you don't have this machine, you can't make a record. And they haven't been made in 43 years. And most of them are well over 50 years old. And so that's where we come in. Because the problem that the cutting engineers have is that the motors for these things date back to the 1950s, 60s. The Lyrec motor for, for this, uh, this machine, which is the usual motor for this, is really ancient. It's a beautiful motor. It was made in Denmark and has a long shaft that sits on the floor. And it's noisy. Um, and it's direct drive, of course. All of these, these things are direct drive. You can't make any of this with a belt drive. And um, that's actually where we come in. Because, you know, OMA is about making things with no compromise. And uh, we set out, uh, OMA uh, and Richard Krebs and his team in New Zealand, it's like 10 years ago now, we set out to make the world's best turntable, direct drive turntable, and we developed a technology for the direct drive motor platter system because with a, a, a direct drive turntable as with a direct drive cutting lathe, the platter and the motor really are one assembly. The motor spins once, the platter spins once. It's one thing. So the motor is absolutely essential to this machine. Uh, what that means is the, the, the record can only be as good as the motor. If the motor, for example, which is very old and not properly maintained, if, if it's not running at the right speed, you have a big problem. You, you know, your record won't be at the right speed. Or if it's noisy, that's more of a problem. If it's noisy, the noise is transmitted into the system, and then your record will be noisy. So if you have a really good system at home, you'd hear that noise. That's not good. So OMA, with its made with no compromise philosophy, and Krebs set out to make a system that would be the world's best turntable. And I think we did that with K3 and K5, the OMA turn, direct drive turntables. So then when I met Chris Muth and I understood this problem that cutting engineers have with the ancient motors on these things, the last motor, by the way, that was made for this 
was made by Techniques, the SPO2 motor, and it got uh, away from this whole direct drive thing with a shaft on the floor. It, it bolted to the bottom of the platter. And I believe the last, the last uh, Neumann motor, the very end, the last uh, decks, which were also made for direct metal mastering, uh, so they had, had to have more powerful motors, same deal. Chris and I got into a discussion about the fact that our motor on the turntable on K3 and K5, so good if we could adapt that motor for these cutting lathes. So a few hundred of these out there, they're in active use every day, cutting the records that make the vinyl now that you're buying. And that was a challenge that Richard and I were willing to accept. So this has taken several years. And with our no compromise philosophy, what we've done is we upsized the K3 motor and we built this. And um, this direct drive motor doesn't have a line shaft or it doesn't have any of the problems that any of the previous motors had. It's also far more powerful. We even use the same um, controls that we use for K3 on, on this system. And so it's so our electronics, our control system, our programming, and we invented and, and you know, designed and built this new motor. Why did we do that? Well, you know, with Ome, the philosophy is how can we make sound better for people? And with uh, a record, you're cutting, everybody knows, right, these grooves, which are basically the amplitude of the signal. But there's another aspect to sound reproduction, which nobody's talking about, except us. And that is time, the time domain. The accuracy of the time encoded in the record translates to the accuracy of what your system can play. So if we improve the way we cut time into the record, we are going to improve how, how much enjoyment you can get out of music, how much more um, it can convey. Because if, if the time domain is really accurate, you feel like the music is more real, more alive. It's more effective for you. So, you know, saying like we're not going to compromise on this we're going to make the best possible motor for this system hope that we can get these uh, out uh, by the end of the year or the first ones um, and then we'll see what happens but these should enable people who are cutting um, records on these Neumann lays to make much better records I hope and that was our aim thank you <laughs>